seat. The first test went pretty well. Uh, we had three plants that grew really well and they were harvested on Space Station by Commander Steve Swanson when he was up there. And everybody really enjoyed growing the plants from, from the responses that we've heard. Uh, we did have a few issues with the watering system for veggies, so we're actually working on trying to get those issues solved and grow some more plants for the crew. So what did you grow and did it grow? So we grew red romaine lettuce the first time, um, and, and it grew, um, and we had, we had three good-looking plants that were harvested. We were um, hoping to have six plants, and one never germinated at all, so we're trying to figure out what happened with that packet. Um, I think um, the, we're growing the, the veggies in we call plant pillows. They're little grow bags, and so we brought that one back to figure out why it didn't grow. And then two actually died because they had some water stress. But the other three um, grew fine. Commander Swanson actually watered the plants directly, and and that helped to save them. Uh, so station R two for veggie. The five other pillows worked without any problem. That's uh, great to hear. So now we're figuring out why the watering system didn't um, perform in the way that we needed it to, and we'll be able to, to try it again. But it was, a, it was red romaine lettuce was the first crop. Mm -hmm. And did anyone taste it after it came back? Uh, no, so we harvested um, them in June, and they were frozen on orbit, because we really wanted to figure out the food safety, the microbiology of these plants, to know, are they safe for the crew to eat? Um, there's not really an easy way to wash your vegetables in space. And so um, we had them frozen in Melfi in the minus 80 laboratory freezer on ISS and then brought back on SpaceX 4. So we got those back around the end of October and we were able to look at the microorganisms on the plants. So I know you're in the middle of analyzing the lettuce that came back, but is there anything you can share with us right now that you've learned so sure. far? Sure. So we did preliminary uh, food safety analysis of the microbiology, and that looked about what we would expect on station. Um, the levels were fairly consistent. You know, they, they, they probably are low enough that the food would actually be safe for the crew to eat. So we're working right now with the advanced environmental health and the food folks to, to get to that point point. Um, we also analyzed the plants in terms of antioxidants, anthocyanins, phenolics, and elements, and those all looked pretty similar to the ground plants. There might be some differences, but we had such a small sample number, it's a little hard to tell. Um, we're doing some other things right now in terms of the plant pillows and doing the analysis of those, but that's still in work. There is no up or down in space, so how do the plants know where to go? Right. Or grow. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a very good point. Um, plants are are really interesting in that they kind of key in on different stimuli. So, in the absence of gravity, the shoots grow towards the light. You know, and on Earth, shoots grow towards the light. So, in veggie, we have the lights on top, and the shoots grow up. Uh, the roots. You know, they don't know which way is up and down, but they'll tend to grow towards things like water gradients or pockets of nutrients. Um, and they get kind of contained in those plant pillows. But one of the things that we're interested in veggie is looking at, can we, can we do x-ray scans of those plant pillows and see the roots and see how it's different? So that's, that's a really interesting question because getting that root zone right is the biggest challenge we've had so far. Now, will this help with crop production on Earth? Well, I mean, we're learning a lot of basic plant physiology using the space station. You know, veggie um, is, is one thing, but we've had years of really great experiments, and we still have a lot of really great experiments going on. And we have some more hardware that's going to be going up in the next couple of years, a very high-tech plant growth chamber called the Advanced Plant Habitat, where we'll get even more really solid information on plant physiology in space. Um, and, you know, we're also learning about building better plant growth systems. Um, the lighting studies that we've done here on Earth, trying to figure out what's the most effect, uh, uh, efficient form of electric lighting, are, are being used in commercial greenhouse industries now. You know, the same types of LED lighting that we're using on veggie uh, is going on in commercial greenhouses around the world and in things like um, plant factories, vertical urban agriculture. So right there, a lot of this NASA research, you know, is kind of translating into commercial um, applications that help us grow healthier, you know, more efficient, more um, 
energy efficient, more labor efficient um, types of crop plants, you know, because we got a lot of people to feed on this planet. So anything that we can learn can, you know, hopefully translate. So what are the types of plants you're looking at next? So the, the next types of plants that we're thinking about growing um, are more leafy greens for, for the near term because um, they grow more quickly and they're something that the crew might be able to eat as a salad in, you know, in the next, you know, year or so and that would be ideal. So we're looking at like small Chinese cabbages and, and other varieties of leafy greens that would taste good, be nutritious and grow well. Um, and then in you know, a little farther out we're starting to look at dwarf peppers and dwarf tomatoes because we want these other components of the salad system. You know, a salad is not just lettuce. So it'll be nice to have that variety as well. And in case you're wondering, the lights are purple. They look a little pink, but red plus blue LEDs equals purple because plants need those kind of wavelengths to grow. Now plants are green because they reflect most of the green light, but absorb the red and blue. So there are some green LEDs in the veggie as well, and, and that's really to make the plants look green, and, and that's really for the crew and, and not really the plants. The astronauts really uh, apparently seem to like the purple lights. Uh, they've taken a ton of photos with just the lights off in the Columbus module, and uh, the veggies you can see in this photo, well, looks like a disco. Well, everybody knows that plants are important for the daily life on the earth, for the daily life of the human being. For the same reason, really, plants are important for uh, any adventure of space exploration that the human being can undertake. Plants produce oxygen, which is an essential component of, uh, for our life. Plants produce uh, um, water, which is also essential. Plants produce fundamental food. We are now using the fantastic resources offered by the International Space Station, which are just being now uh, fully available from the, even in the case of Europe, with the implementation of the Columbus Laboratory, which is an unprecedented tool for uh, biological, which is in general for scientific research, but in particular for biological and part more particularly for plant research. Gravity is an essential factor for the, for the growth of plants. Roots grow downwards and stems grow upwards because of the presence of the gravity vector. When this vector is absent, as in space, this process is totally disorganized. And the study of the particular cellular and molecular mechanisms of this process is essential to be capable of successfully growing plants in the future in the conditions of microgravity that exist in space. European scientists have developed a fundamental role in the discrimination of these cellular and molecular mechanisms. Then, the next step is to pass from the model plant that we are now using, Arabidopsis, is a plant that nobody is interested in except plant scientists because it's the model, so to pass to, uh, to uh, plants of economical value, such as rice or wheat or cereals in general, uh, soya bean, uh, plants which are interesting for human food. And then the next step is to produce a, a space garden or a, or a special uh, space culture capable of producing a crop, capable of being eaten or being mm, taken by astronauts as they food. And also an interesting factor uh, as a psychological uh, relief. And we will be capable of producing plants that mm, will be able of, uh, of growing deeper in the soil, or on the contrary, which uh, the roots uh, growing more horizontally. And this is very important in terms of the, the capability of taking the water, which is being found deeper or at the surface of the soil. So really the, the purpose, the objective, is really to translate, eh, to translate this, the Earth garden to Mars or to the Moon, or to the interior of the space station, or to whatever space vehicle, or whatever space planet, or space habitat that uh, the human being can put the feet on.